Praseodymium is a chemical element with symbol PR and atomic number 59. It is the third member of the lanthanide series and is traditionally considered to be one of the rare earth metals. Praseodymium is a soft, silvery, malleable and ductile metal, valued for its magnetic, electrical, chemical, and optical properties. It is too reactive to be found in native form, and pure praseodymium metal slowly develops a green oxide coating when exposed to air. Praseodymium always occurs naturally together with the other rare earth metals. It is the fourth most common rare earth element, making up 9.1 parts per million of the Earth's crust, an abundance similar to that of boron. In 1841, Swedish chemist Carl Gustav Mosander extracted a rare earth oxide residue he called didymium from a residue he called lanthana, in turn separated from cerium salts. In 1885, the Austrian chemist Baron Karl Auer von Welsbach separated didymium into two elements that gave salts of different colors, which he named praseodymium and neodymium. The name praseodymium comes from the Greek prasanos, prasanos meaning green, and didymos, didymo twin. Like most rare earth elements, praseodymium most readily forms the plus 3 oxidation state, which is the only stable state in aqueous solution, although the plus 4 oxidation state is known in some solid compounds and, uniquely among the lanthanides, the plus 5 oxidation state is attainable in matrix isolation conditions. Aqueous praseodymium ions are yellowish-green, and similarly praseodymium results in various shades of yellow-green when incorporated into glasses. Many of praseodymium's industrial uses involve its ability to filter yellow light from light sources. Topic: Characteristics. Topic: Physical. Praseodymium is the third member of the lanthanide series. In the periodic table, it appears between the lanthanides cerium to its left and neodymium to its right, and above the actinide protactinium. It is a ductile metal with a hardness comparable to that of silver. Its 59 electrons are arranged in the configuration Z 4F36 is 2. Theoretically, all five outer electrons can act as valence electrons, but the use of all five requires extreme conditions and normally, praseodymium only gives up three or sometimes four electrons in its compounds. Praseodymium is the first of the lanthanides to have an electron configuration conforming to the Aufbau principle, which predicts the 4f orbitals to have a lower energy level than the 5d orbitals. This does not hold for lanthanum and cerium, because the sudden contraction of the 4f orbitals does not happen until after lanthanum, and is not strong enough at cerium to avoid occupying the 5d subshell. Nevertheless, solid praseodymium takes on the Z 4F 25D16's 2 configuration, with one electron in the 5D subshell like all the other trivalent lanthanides all but europium and ytterbium, which are divalent in the metallic state. Like most lanthanides, praseodymium usually only uses three electrons as valence electrons, as afterwards the remaining 4F electrons are too strongly bound. This is because the 4F orbitals penetrate the most through the inert xenon core of electrons to the nucleus, followed by 5D D and 6s, and this increases with higher ionic charge. Praseodymium nevertheless can continue losing a fourth and even occasionally a fifth valence electron because it comes very early in the lanthanide series, where the nuclear charge is still low enough and the 4F subshell energy high enough to allow the removal of further valence electrons. Thus, similarly to the other early trivalent lanthanides, praseodymium has a double hexagonal close-packed crystal structure at room temperature. At about 560 degrees Celsius, it transitions to a face-centered cubic structure, and a body-centered cubic structure appears shortly before the melting point of 935 degrees Celsius. Praseodymium, like all of the lanthanides except lanthanum, ytterbium, and lutetium, which have no unpaired 4F electrons, is paramagnetic at room temperature. Unlike some other rare earth metals, which show antiferromagnetic or ferromagnetic ordering at low temperatures, praseodymium is paramagnetic at all temperatures above 1 K. Isotopes Praseodymium has only one stable and naturally occurring isotope, 141 Pr. It is thus a mononucleidic element, and its standard atomic weight can be determined with high precision as it is a constant of nature. This isotope has 82 neutrons, a magic number that confers additional stability. 
This isotope is produced in stars through the S and R processes slow and rapid neutron capture, respectively. All other praseodymium isotopes have half-lives under a day and most under a minute, with the single exception of 143 PR with a half-life of 13.6 days. Both 143 PR and 141 PR occur as fission products of uranium. The primary decay mode of isotopes lighter than 141 PR is inverse beta decay or electron capture to isotopes of cerium, while that of heavier isotopes is beta decay to isotopes of neodymium. Topic chemistry Praseodymium metal tarnishes slowly in air, forming a spalling oxide layer like iron rust. A centimeter sized sample of praseodymium metal corrodes completely in about a year. It burns readily at 150 degrees Celsius to form praseodymium IV oxide, a nonstoichiometric compound approximating to PR6011 PR plus 11022 PR6011. This may be reduced to praseodymium oxide PR203 with hydrogen gas. The dark colored praseodymium IV oxide, PRO2, is the most oxidized product of the combustion of praseodymium and is only obtained by reaction of praseodymium metal with pure oxygen at 400 degrees Celsius and 282 bars. The reactivity of praseodymium conforms to periodic trends, as it is one of the first and thus one of the largest lanthanides. At 1000 degrees Celsius, many praseodymium oxides with composition Pro2-X exist as disordered, nonstoichiometric phases with 0. 0.25, but at 400 to 700 degrees Celsius the oxide defects are instead ordered, creating phases of the general formula PrNO2N-2 with N. Topic: 4, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, and infinity. These phases proi are sometimes labeled alpha and beta non-stoichiometric beta y 1.833 delta 1.818 epsilon 1.8 zeta 1.778 iota 1.714 theta and sigma praseodymium is quite electropositive and reacts slowly with cold water and quite quickly with hot water to form praseodymium 3 hydroxide 2 PR S plus 6 H 2 O L 2 PR O 3 A Q plus 3 H 2 G Praseodymium metal reacts with all the halogens to form trihalides 2 PR S plus 3 F 2 G 2 PR F 3 S green 2 PR S plus 3 C L 2 G 2 PR C L 3 S green 2 PR South plus 3 bridge 2 G 2 PR B R 3 S green 2 PR S plus 3 I2 G 2 PR I3 S the tetrafluoride PRF4 is also known and is produced by reacting a mixture of sodium fluoride and praseodymium 3 fluoride with fluorine gas producing Na2 PRF6 following which sodium fluoride is removed from the reaction mixture with liquid hydrogen fluoride Additionally praseodymium forms a bronze diiodide like the diiodides of lanthanum cerium and gadolinium it is a praseodymium 3 electride compound praseodymium dissolves readily in dilute sulfuric acid to form solutions containing the chartreuse pr3+ ions which exist as prh 20 3 plus complexes 2 PR S plus 3 H 2 S O 4 A Q 2 PR 3 plus A Q plus 3 S O 2 minus 4 A Q plus 3 H 2 G dissolving praseodymium IV compounds in water results in solutions containing the yellow PR 4 plus ions because of the high positive standard reduction potential of the PR 4 plus PR 3 plus couple at plus 3.2 volts these ions are unstable in aqueous solution oxidizing water and being reduced to PR3+. The value for the PR3+, PR couple is 2.35 V. Although praseodymium v in the bulk state is unknown, the existence of praseodymium in its plus 5 oxidation state with the stable electron configuration of the preceding noble gas xenon under noble gas matrix isolation conditions was reported in 2016. The species assigned to the plus 5 state were identified as Pro2 plus, its O2 and R adducts, and Pro2 O2. Organopraseodymium compounds are very similar to those of the other lanthanides, as they all share an inability to undergo pi backbonding. 
They are thus mostly restricted to the mostly ionic cyclopentadienides isostructural with those of lanthanum and the sigma bonded simple alkyls and ARYLS, some of which may be polymeric. The coordination chemistry of praseodymium is largely that of the large, electropositive PR3 plus ion, and is thus largely similar to those of the other early lanthanides La3 plus, CE3 plus, and ND3 plus. For instance, like lanthanum, cerium, and neodymium, praseodymium nitrates form both 4 to 3 and 1 to 1 complexes with 18 crown 6, whereas the middle lanthanides from promethium to gadolinium can only form the 4 to 3 complex, and the later lanthanides from terbium to lutetium cannot successfully coordinate to all the ligands. Such praseodymium complexes have high but uncertain coordination numbers and poorly defined stereochemistry, with exceptions resulting from exceptionally bulky ligands such as the tricoordinate Prn -sime There are also a few mixed oxides and fluorides involving praseodymium IV, but it does not have an appreciable coordination chemistry in this oxidation state like its neighbor cerium. History In 1751, the Swedish mineralogist Axel Fredrik Kronstedt discovered a heavy mineral from the mine at Bastnes, later named Sarit. Thirty years later, the 15-year-old Wilhelm Heisinger, from the family owning the mine, sent a sample of it to Karl Scheele, who did not find any new elements within. In 1803, after Heisinger had become an ironmaster, he returned to the mineral with Johns Jacob Berzelius and isolated a new oxide, which they named Saria after the dwarf planet Ceres, which had been discovered two years earlier. Saria was simultaneously and independently isolated in Germany by Martin Heinrich Klaproth. Between 1839 and 1843, Saria was shown to be a mixture of oxides by the Swedish surgeon and chemist Carl Gustav Mosander, who lived in the same house as Berzelius. He separated out two other oxides, which he named lanthana and didymia. He partially decomposed a sample of cerium nitrate by roasting it in air and then treating the resulting oxide with dilute nitric acid. The metals that formed these oxides were thus named lanthanum and didymium. While lanthanum turned out to be a pure element, didymium was not and turned out to be only a mixture of all the stable early lanthanides from praseodymium to europium, as had been suspected by Marc de Lafontaine after spectroscopic analysis, though he lacked the time to pursue its separation into its constituents. The heavy pair of samarium and europium were only removed in 1879 by Paul Emile Lecoq de Boisbaudrin, and it was not until 1885 that Karl Auer von Welsbach separated didymium into praseodymium and neodymium. Since neodymium was a larger constituent of didymium than praseodymium, it kept the old name with disambiguation, while praseodymium was distinguished by the leek green color of its salts Greek prasios, leek green. The composite nature of didymium had previously been suggested in 1882 by Bohuslav Bronner, who did not experimentally pursue its separation. <laughs> Occurrence and production Praseodymium is not particularly rare, making up 9.1 mg per kilogram of the Earth's crust. This value is between those of lead 13 mg per kilogram and boron 9 mg per kilogram, and makes praseodymium the fourth most abundant of the lanthanides, behind cerium 66 mg per kilogram, neodymium 40 mg per kilogram, and lanthanum 35 mg per kilogram. It is less abundant than the rare earth elements yttrium 31 mg per kilogram and scandium 25 mg per kilogram. Instead, praseodymium's classification as a rare earth metal comes from its rarity relative to common earths, such as lime and magnesia, the few known minerals containing it for which extraction is commercially viable, as well as the length and complexity of extraction. Although not particularly rare, praseodymium is never found as a dominant rare earth in praseodymium bearing minerals. It is always preceded by cerium, lanthanum, and usually also by neodymium. The PR3 plus ion is similar in size to the early lanthanides of the cerium group those from lanthanum up to samarium and europium that immediately follow in the periodic table, and hence it tends to occur along with them in phosphate, silicate and carbonate minerals, such as monazite and bastnasite where M refers to all the rare earth metals except scandium and the radioactive promethium mostly Ce, La, and Y, with somewhat less ND and PR. 
Bastnasite is usually lacking in thorium and the heavy lanthanides, and the purification of the light lanthanides from it is less involved. The ore, after being crushed and ground, is first treated with hot concentrated sulfuric acid, evolving carbon dioxide, hydrogen fluoride, and silicon tetrafluoride. The product is then dried and leached with water, leaving the early lanthanide ions, including lanthanum, in solution. The procedure for monazite, which usually contains all the rare earths, as well as thorium, is more involved. Monazite, because of its magnetic properties, can be separated by repeated electromagnetic separation. After separation, it is treated with hot concentrated sulfuric acid to produce water-soluble sulfates of rare earths. The acidic filtrates are partially neutralized with sodium hydroxide to pH 3 to 4, during which thorium precipitates as a hydroxide and is removed. The solution is treated with ammonium oxalate to convert rare earths to their insoluble oxalates, the oxalates are converted to oxides by annealing, and the oxides are dissolved in nitric acid. This last step excludes one of the main components, cerium, whose oxide is insoluble in HNO3. Care must be taken when handling some of the residues as they contain 228 Ra, the daughter of 232 Th, which is a strong gamma emitter. Praseodymium may then be separated from the other lanthanides via ion exchange chromatography, or by using a solvent such as tributyl phosphate where the solubility of lane 3 plus increases as the atomic number increases. If ion exchange chromatography is used, the mixture of lanthanides is loaded into one column of cation exchange resin and Cu2 plus or Zn2 plus or Fe3 plus is loaded into the other. An aqueous solution of a complexing agent, known as the eluent usually triammonium edtate, is passed through the columns, and lane 3 plus is displaced from the first column and redeposited in a compact band at the top of the column before being re-displaced by NH plus 4. The Gibbs free energy of formation for lane ed to H complexes increases along the lanthanides by about one quarter from Ce3 plus to Lu3 plus, so that the lane 3 plus cations descend the development column in a band and are fractionated repeatedly, eluding from heaviest to lightest. They are then precipitated as their insoluble oxalates, burned to form the oxides, and then reduced to the metals. Applications. <laughs> <laughs> Leo Moser, son of Ludwig Moser, founder of the Moser glassworks in what is now Karlovy Vary in the Czech Republic, not to be confused with the mathematician of the same name, investigated the use of praseodymium in glass coloration in the late 1920s, yielding a yellow-green glass given the name prasimit. However, at that time far cheaper colorants could give a similar color, so prasimit was not popular. Few pieces were made, and examples are now extremely rare. Moser also blended praseodymium with neodymium to produce heliolite glass heliolite in German, which was more widely accepted. The first enduring commercial use of purified praseodymium, which continues today, is in the form of a yellow-orange praseodymium yellow stain for ceramics, which is a solid solution in the zircon lattice. This stain has no hint of green in it, by contrast, at sufficiently high loadings, praseodymium glass is distinctly green rather than pure yellow, as the lanthanides are so similar, praseodymium can substitute for most other lanthanides without significant loss of function, and indeed many applications such as mishmetal and ferrocium alloys involve variable mixes of several lanthanides, including small quantities of praseodymium. The following more modern applications involve praseodymium specifically, or at least praseodymium in a small subset of the lanthanides. In combination with neodymium, another rare earth element, praseodymium is used to create high power magnets notable for their strength and durability. In general, most alloys of the cerium group rare earths lanthanum through samarium with 3D transition metals give extremely stable magnets that are often used in small equipment, such as motors, printers, watches, headphones, loudspeakers, and magnetic storage. As an alloying agent with magnesium to create high-strength metals that are used in aircraft engines, yttrium and neodymium are also viable substitutes. Praseodymium is present in the rare earth mixture whose fluoride forms the core of carbon arc lights, which are used in the motion picture industry for studio lighting and projector lights. Praseodymium compounds give glasses and enamels a yellow color. Praseodymium is used to color ceramics yellow. Praseodymium is a component of didymium glass, which is used to make certain types of welders and glass blowers goggles. 
Silicate crystals doped with praseodymium ions have been used to slow a light pulse down to a few hundred meters per second. Praseodymium alloyed with nickel has such a strong magnetic caloric effect that it has allowed scientists to approach within one thousandth of a degree of absolute zero. Doping praseodymium in fluoride glass allows it to be used as a single-mode fiber optical amplifier. Praseodymium oxide in solid solution with ceria or ceria zirconia has been used as an oxidation catalyst. PR3 plus ions are used as activators in some red, green, blue, and ultraviolet phosphors. Biological role and precautions The early lanthanides have been found to be essential to some methanotrophic bacteria living in volcanic mudpots, such as Methylacidifilum fumariolicum, lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, and neodymium are about equally effective. Praseodymium is otherwise not known to have a biological role in any other organisms, but is not very toxic either. Intravenous injection of rare earths into animals has been known to impair liver function, but the main side effects from inhalation of rare earth oxides in humans come from radioactive thorium and uranium impurities. <laughs> 